guys, how's it going? This is a video that I've been thinking of making for quite a while now, and it is my desk tour. I would describe my work from home situation as pretty minimalistic, but there is one place that I do spend a lot of money on, and that is my neck and back pain. I guess like ergonomics in general. Uh, unfortunately, I do have a job that's extremely like stare at the computer and type stuff. My back and neck situation is just not great. It's my C7 vertebrae that's like really messed up and it causes like, oh, my neck just doesn't, it just feels bad like all the time. So I'm gonna start off with all the items that accommodate my neck and back pain. Um, and then I'll talk about like the computer and tech stuff and then all the other kind of like accessories that I've laid out over here as well. All right, so let's get started. The so first off is this desk. This is a standing desk. It is the autonomous.ai smart desk core. It goes all the way up to a standing desk and then it also goes all the way down so that you can sit and everything in between as well. It, it also has some settings over here, which I believe it allows you to put in specific settings, specific heights, but I have personally never actually used this feature before. I'm pretty happy with this desk. It's always just goes up and it goes down and it does that perfectly fine. Um, it also has like some places to put your cords in, which I don't use because I don't actually have a monitor. There's two features that I wish this desk does have though. The first one is that I wish that it has some sort of feature that makes it so that it's locked in a certain position, specifically for me, like in a standing position for a certain period of time, because I have this issue where, you know, I would like stand for a bit, but then just get tired or something. And then I ended up sitting and then I don't want to actually like stand again. So I want to be able to lock it in a standing position. So it would force me to actually stand up more when I'm working. The second feature is the surface. So the surface, you know, it's, it's decent, like it's nice and everything and it's heat proof. You can put hot stuff on it perfectly fine. The only thing is just that it gets dirty very, very easily, uh, especially because I have Beep Beep over here who, you know, pretty much just like rolls around on the, on the table here. The, the fur and stuff, it kind of gets caught and it's kind of like hard to clean. Except for that, pretty happy with this desk. Next up is the crowning glory and also the most expensive item that I'm going to be showing you guys today. <laughs> and it is this chair. And this is the Herman Miller Aeron. I think that's how you pronounce it, Aeron chair. I got it in gray and I got size B. So I'm actually in between size A and size B and I'll throw up a chart here in case uh, you're curious about what I mean by that. Uh, but basically I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get size B, maybe because I'll grow a little bit taller. But sadly that has not happened yet. And <laughs> by the looks of it, I'm probably just gonna shrink instead. This chair has a lot of different functionalities and I got the decked out version as well. So it has the back and lumbar support. Uh, it has like this entire guide that I follow that exactly like tells you how to get the most correct fit and the best support. It also has like tilt adjustment, the height adjustment, as well as the arm adjustments, a bunch of different configurations. I think there's like more fancy wheels, but I didn't get those because I didn't really see why I needed them. So the wheels are the normal ones, but everything else I did get like the super decked out version just because my neck and back are so screwed up. I think overall this chair cost me around $1,500, $1,500 to $1,800. I don't recall exactly, but basically it was just like really freaking expensive, okay? I do have to say that it is really worth it to me though. My goal is to not be bed bound by the time I'm 30. So this has probably been the most substantial thing that has helped me contribute towards that goal. It's not the most comfortable chair, but it does just make you into the perfect posture. Like it forces you to sit in the most perfect posture and it supports you in all the right places. Okay, next up is another thing <laughs> to accommodate my neck and back pain. You're, you're probably thinking at this point, like how do you have so many <laughs> things just to like accommodate your 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 problems? And I'm, I'm telling you, take this as a warning from me, okay? Don't be like me. When I was younger, I had such bad posture. Like I would be sitting in bed, like laying in bed, looking at stuff, like laying down and just like, just have the worst posture ever and this is what happens oh god right anyways moving on um so this is the maple shiatsu back and neck massager with heat and deep kneading massage this is like freaking amazing okay this is like the thing that i'm just so glad that i purchased and i actually purchased this twice this is like an upgrade from the first version but the way that it works is basically they have like these little balls and then you put it on your neck like so and then it just massages it and it has heat in it and it kind of like digs into all the spots and then you can like move it around however however you need be. Obviously not as good as we get a professional massage. I do use it on a daily basis and it's helped a lot. Okay, I'm done with my ergonomic stuff now. Next up, I'm going to be talking about my laptop. 
So this one here is my personal laptop. I also have a work laptop, which I do all my work stuff on. Uh, for my personal one though, let me read you what it is exactly because it has a really long name that I can never remember. It is the Asus Rogue Zephyrus G14 GA401. It's a 14 inch laptop. Um, it cost me around $1,200, I believe. Uh, and it's I think it's considered like a mid range gaming laptop and it has a lot of really, really good reviews and it's supposed to be like really good for what it does. Unfortunately, I don't actually game, so I can't really speak to that front of it, but I do use it pretty heavily. I use it a lot when I'm doing editing, when I'm live streaming, um, and just like some data science things that I do on the side as well. I don't actually know that much about hardware in general. So just in case you're interested, I will put in more stats over here. Okay, so I've had this laptop for about a year and a half now. So I'll talk about the pros of the laptop and also some of the cons. I've actually been using Apple products as long as I can remember previously. And it only last year that I switched to using a Windows computer. So I will talk a little bit about why I'm considering switching back as well. Okay, so first I'll talk about the pros. It is extremely fast, especially when it loads up. Like it's like boom, like it's super, super fast when it shuts down, goes to sleep, and then when you reboot it again. In terms of editing, it's also pretty decent. I know a lot of laptops can't actually handle Premiere Pro, which is what I use to edit. And this is this laptop generally handles it fine. Sometimes it does crash, like maybe like once or twice, but it's not anything that's super severe. And in terms of data science, at least for my purposes, it's perfectly good for that. I generally don't really do things locally as much anymore. And even when I do, it's just like on a Jupyter notebook when I try to test something out. To handle that level of data science stuff, perfectly fine. Also when I'm scripting, anything like that, when I was coding, a trading bot with Jake didn't have any issues with this laptop as well. And I was live streaming it as well. Now I'll talk about some of the cons. My biggest issue with this laptop is that it's not super reliable. It crashes pretty easily. And I don't know if that's more because of just Windows in general where it's this specific laptop, but that does happen. And it's pretty annoying, especially when I'm live streaming, you know, and then it just like crashes. For those of you who go to my live streams, you would know that it's like, a weekly occurrence, like something happens to my laptop. Also for some reason, it just like randomly mutes my mic. I have now discovered a lot of ways in which your mic can be muted. And again, I don't know if this is like a software thing or if it's the hardware itself. There's also a few other things that are kind of annoying about this laptop. Uh, for some reason, the configurations just kind of change around a lot. Like the contrast and stuff, it just randomly decides to completely just change and then and then I'm like, okay, crap. Like I try to fix it for like an hour and then it just like fixes itself. So that, that happens quite often as well. It also doesn't have a webcam, which I think is pretty standard for Asus computers. And at this price range, you know, 1,200 or so, I'm not complaining that much, but it does not have a webcam, which is why I have to buy like this external webcam, um, which I use with that laptop. So the reason why I'm considering switching back to a MacBook Pro or just another Apple product is because it's just not very reliable. Uh, it's definitely faster than a MacBook Pro. It also has more functionality than a MacBook Pro. But for me, like all those extra functionality and the speed, it doesn't matter as much. But the bigger like deal breaker is, is the fact that it's not reliable. Like having it crash on me when I'm trying to live stream, uh, like that's something that is far more important uh, than, than just like all these additional functionalities. I'll rather have a laptop that's able to reliably do the things that it's supposed to do as opposed to having more functionality and more possible things available, but having random issues pop up. And next up I have over here is the webcam. I'm only using this webcam because that one doesn't have a webcam. And sometimes when I'm calling someone, you know, they gotta see your face. Uh, so I honestly don't really know that much about this. This was recommended to me by Kenji and he just was just like, this is a pretty decent webcam. So I was like, all right, <laughs> I guess I'll just get this then. I think it cost me like 25 bucks. Um, the exact name of it is FaxPod 1080 USB webcam wide angle web camera with microphone. Yeah, I just got it off Amazon. I would say that this webcam is decent. It does its job, especially for that price point. Like I don't have higher expectations for it. I'm pretty happy with it. I also never use the mic on this. I always have an external mic where I would just use the computer mic. Next up is earphones. These are my earphones over here. I also have AirPods, which I use when I'm not on the desk. When usually when I'm working out or I'm going out, I will use AirPods. But at my desk, I generally use these earphones. These are the one more quad driver in-ear headphones with the braided cord. This is recommended to me by a friend who said that this is really good for the price range. It costs $110, I believe. Um, and I have to say, I'm very quite pleased with these earphones. So it comes in this very nice box over here. And the unboxing experience is 
is very, very awesome. Like it makes you feel like you're really getting your money's worth. It actually comes with like a little case over here um, and it has a bunch of accessories as well. Um, but I think what is most impressive about it is the fact that it has such a large array of different butts all the way from rubber to foam. I have pretty small ear holes, I think, uh, ear canals, yes. So I use the 11 millimeter foam tips and they are very, very nice. They fit very comfortably in my ear and the sound is crystal clear. Like the sound is amazing. Uh, not an audiophile, not really sure how any of this works, but apparently it's because it has these quad drivers, which makes the audio really, really quite nice. Overall, I think the foam tip is a lot more comfortable than the rubber tips. These earphones don't have sound cancellation in them, but it does have pretty decent sound isolation. The only slight criticism that I can give to these earphones is the fact that the braided cord, which is supposed to be more durable, is not durable enough for beep beep. Um, this is my second pair of these earphones because beep beep chewed through the first pair of these earphones. Okay, so next up, I'm going to talk about another accessory, which is this hard drive over here. This is the Seagate portable four terabyte external hard drive. I'll put more stats on the screen in case you guys are more interested. This cost around $99. I use this hard drive primarily to store video files and just like things related to YouTube. And the four terabytes, I've used up around two terabytes so far. It's quite good. The write speed is 120 megabytes per second. Not really sure if that's slow or fast, but it works pretty well for me. Like I just transfer files and it's fine. And then I take it away and then it's fine. And then I put it back in and, and all my files are there. So I'm like for a hard drive, quite pleased with this. I should mention that I also have Google Drive. I use Google Drive more for collaboration purposes and for things that are outside of YouTube because I actually did the math. This is more cost effective to get a external hard drive than to purchase Google Drive because Google Drive is a monthly subscription or like a yearly subscription. So it costs like $90 or something to get a year subscription for a similar amount. And for this, it's like mine forever worth $100. All right, we're almost done with my setup. So some more accessories. This is a mouse that I got. It's from Logitech. Honestly, don't really use this mouse that much. I generally just use the trackpad on the laptop, even when I'm editing. I know, right? <laughs> even when I'm editing. Um, so I can probably speed up my editing a lot more if I use this mouse, but I just generally don't. But I do use it sometimes. It has a bunch of buttons on it. I have no idea what any of these buttons do, except for like the middle scrolly thing. So it's tight. <laughs> from the same brand is this keyboard. I actually don't remember if this keyboard came together with this mouse or not. It might have, but it's just another Logitech keyboard. The keys are all right. I also don't really use this keyboard very much at all. Generally just use whatever's on my laptop. I think if I actually had a really nice keyboard, I would probably use it properly, but this one is just meh, you know, it's like a normal office keyboard. You use the buttons, everything's fine. It's not like the super clicky mechanical keyboards. It also doesn't have very good wrist support, I think. Like, I don't think it's any better than my actual laptop. So when I do move to the Bay Area, I think I will invest more into like just keyboards in general, especially in terms of like wrist support. Uh, apparently, if you are, you can be super duper productive if you have extra high typing speed and you need a really good keyboard for that. I don't really know why it is that typing speed is very important. Maybe one of you guys can tell me in the comments. Probably gonna invest in the better keyboard in the future. Uh, final two items over here. The first one is this Wacom, Wacom, Wacom writing tablet. And another one is this really, really old Samsung tablet. The writing tablet, it comes with a little pen. It's quite nice. It, in terms of functionality, it's pretty good. I generally use this more just when I'm trying to draw stuff onto the thumbnails and then do things on Photoshop. This is when I use this tablet is what even called a tablet. And this ancient, ancient Samsung tablet, it is the model SM T713 and it has 32 gigabytes. I don't even know how old this tablet is and it's really not very good. <laughs> it, it, like it doesn't really charge anymore and it doesn't really do anything. Previously, when I first started making videos, I used to script out my videos and then I would have a um, teleprompter and I would use this as like a, a thing that displays my script so I can read off it. But I don't script my videos anymore, so I generally don't use this as much anymore. But yeah, this is just one of the other things I do keep on my desk. Oh, I totally forgot. One last thing, one last thing. Okay, so next up is this whiteboard. This is something that I actually use quite a lot. I just got this on Amazon. I'll put the stats about this whiteboard on screen. I honestly don't remember that much about it. It was pretty cheap. And when I first 
start an analysis. I like writing down all my plans on this whiteboard and also just doing like calculations and whatever it is I want to do before I actually go and translate everything into code or into math and formulas and things like that. So yeah, I use this whiteboard pretty heavily. It's held up pretty well. There's like a few stains. I don't know if you guys can see, there's like a little bit of stains and indentation, but considering how heavily I use it, I think it's held up pretty decently. Oh, I should, I should also mention, I finally bit the bullet and I finally purchased an iPad Pro as well. So after watching Ali Abdul's video and then just like doing research on that, I'm like, okay, I'm sold. I'm going to get it um, and get all the accessories related to that as well. So I have not received that yet. Uh, but if you guys want me to do like an unboxing and maybe how like I set it up and stuff for my day to day task, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to do that. But that iPad Pro is probably going to replace this over here. The, the Wacom tablet It's going to replace the Samsung tablet. And it's probably also going to replace this whiteboard because I'm probably going to be writing analysis and stuff just directly onto the iPad itself. Yeah, it might actually even replace my laptop to a certain extent if I'm not doing anything super intensive like editing or something like that. But yeah, these are the things that I have for my work from home office. I did mention before that I would talk about why I didn't have a monitor, but I actually shipped that over to the Bay Area since I'll be moving to the Bay Area in two weeks. So once I get there, um, I'm probably going to redo this video with my new setup that's gonna be there. But for now, this has been my setup for the past year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream.